these designs. Um, it's been a quite an eventful last few days. We uh, flew up to Kansas City and rented a car and drove back and brought back my mother's and my grandmother's actually Singer sewing machine from 1952. And it works. And it's in actually great condition. Um, I don't have it in here because we're getting ready to take it over to uh, the guy who works on my Bernina's and he's going to um, clean it up and do a little maintenance on it, oil, because I don't think it's been used in at least 50 years, would be my guess. But it was inside a cabinet and uh, I brought the cabinet too. Oh my gosh, you guys, it's just in pristine condition. I don't know that it's worth that much, but it's worth a lot to me. So I will be keeping it and I will be doing a video on it. I can hardly, my husband keeps asking me, what video are you gonna do? What video are you gonna do? And I said, I don't know yet. Let's get it, let's get it serviced and get it working and then we'll decide what video. I'll probably do something simple would be my guess, but Anyway, very exciting, um, and it was a whirlwind. We drove, we flew up um, on Thursday night, did all that we needed to do in Kansas City on Friday. Uh, it was my, Tony's, my husband's uh, mother's birthday uh, earlier in the week, so we took her out for her birthday. It was my brother-in-law's retirement party. We took all them out, so we all had a big family uh, event for my husband's side of the family this trip. So we had a great time. It was fun. And then we got up in the morning on Saturday and drove all the way home. Crazy. I know we're crazy, but it was worth it. Uh, we're rested up now. And, um, so there you go. So let's do this pattern. All right. Here is what we're making today. This is the Triscal Wallet by Sonar. It was part of the bee bag making uh, box for July. And um, this is my result. So this is what we're making in the video today. It's got tons of card slots. It's got a zipper pocket. It's got an ID window, a slip pocket there. A slip pocket there. You can put the wristlet on either side because it's got two D rings here. And then it closes with two magnetic snaps. I mean, it is so cute. I love it. I love the fabric. Um, so let's make it. All right. So the pattern that we're going to do today is the Sonar by Nicole. It is the Triscale wallet. This was actually the bee bag making box this month for July. I think it was July. Yeah. And um, Jess Oakleroots did a video. She did a great video. I haven't watched it in its entirety. She made it, evidently, she admittedly made some mistakes cutting it out. Um, and she recovered beautifully, I think. I mean, I haven't watched the whole thing, but I, I have no doubt that she did. I am going to do some of the same cuts that she did. It is a raw edge uh, wallet. So I'm supposed to be getting in the mail today the little um, sample edge coat. So I thought I'd just go ahead and get this the bag started and then we can um, do some of the edge coating together. So. Um, Let's see if I can tell you how I cut it because it, it is a little confusing, I'll just say. The exterior I have made into two pieces. So there's one of these and one of these. This is the flap and this is the bottom of the exterior. So that's what that is. Um, and you need one of those. You can cut it, let me just show you. You can do one full piece, and that's how the pattern is, uh, one full piece. So you could do one fabric for the exterior. I'm doing it so that's a little different. It doesn't really matter. You can do it any way you'd like. Um, and then the interior bottom, 
I have out of the aqua vinyl and the interior, another piece of the interior bottom is made out of um, the kind of, it's kind of a peachy pink fabric. It's very cute. Nice, nice uh, weight too. And then for the interior top, I also did two pieces. The larger pieces out of this and the um, card slot piece is out of the aqua. I haven't done the card slots yet. I'll do one with you because there's two sets of card slots. So I'll do one with you and do the other one off camera. You do need a piece uh, for the connectors. Um, and it's just a half inch piece. I'll show you how that goes. Um, they did send some of the uh, Peltex. So there's three pieces of Peltex. This is for my um, very cute fabric. It's for my um, zipper tabs. And then a wristlet tab, which I am gonna make it a wristlet. So I have that as well. I cut this two inches. Uh, by the desired length just because I, I don't want to have any raw edges with this um, Because it is waterproof canvas, but it frays a little bit and I just don't I'd rather not have any raw edges on that um, There is an ID window and I have a piece of vinyl just clear vinyl for that And then the backing of the ID window I just cut a piece of the little bee fabric. I don't even know if you can see but there's little bees on there so cute. So, so cute. And then there is um, two half inch D rings and one uh, three quarter inch swivel clasp. I may change that actually to a half inch. I'll see. And then she also provided a little uh, tag from Heartwood and Hyde Beach Vibes. Very cute. Uh, th there are three. Um, number five is zipper poles, and there is um, some really pretty uh, zipper tape. And then uh, she did provide in the packet some ribbon for the credit card slots. I'm gonna use my landscape fabric because it's thinner than this, so I'll just hold on to this for now. I gotta put all my my hardware in a bucket because otherwise I'm going to lose it. And then they sent one rivet and one um, magnetic snap. I think there might be, no, there's just one magnetic snap. I might use two. I think the pattern actually calls for two. Um, how Jess and uh, Wonderground Fabrics, the bee back, they only sent one, but I think I might do two. We'll see. So I'm gonna do a little bit of prep and then we'll get started. This is a absolute, I think you might be able to still get the box. This is what it is, the bee bag making box. Um, if you go to Wonderground Fabrics, she has a link to the bee bag making subscription. You still might be able to get that. So go take a look. All right, so let me get these pattern pieces out of the way, sorry. I uh, did this one. So I did the card slots on this one and I just uh, punched holes on the end of each one. And then on the back, I drew a line. And I used my X-Acto knife to cut those lines. You probably could uh, do this on the scan and cut with the, um, you'd have to make your own pattern piece because they doesn't come with any SVG files. Um, and then on all your pattern pieces, mark your lines on the back as well. So for this one, that's what I'm gonna do. So all I did was at the end of each line here, I just made a little hole with my little hole maker here. So it's, I don't know where in the world I got this, but I've had it for hmm, a very long time. Honestly, I, I, I have no idea where it came from. It might have been my mom's, but she didn't make bags. I don't know what she would have used it for. But. All right, so then you put that on your pattern piece and get it, get it in the right 
a good spot and nice and even because when you make this you want it to be you want it to be very even your card slots and I need to cut that off a little bit and then I just went and made a hole Sure. Made a, uh, I mean, I made a mark wherever my holes are. And then I took my piece off. And I used my hole punch to make a hole where all those marks are. And then what I did was I drew the lines on the back. This is a little tedious, but, uh, and it, it would be so much easier if we had uh, SVG files, but we don't. So sometimes you have to do things the old fashioned way. All right, so there's our holes. And now I'm just going to grab my little eight inch ruler. Actually, I think it's a nine inch ruler. And I'm just gonna make, try my best to make sure they're even. And once you get it done, if they're slightly off, you won't be able to. So those aren't perfect, but they're pretty good. So now, let me grab my little tiny uh, pad here and we'll just do some, and I use my ruler again. sure your exacto knife is pretty sharp. I'm probably pretty close to needing to change it. The blade. It'll be fine for the moment. And then if you missed cutting any of it, just make sure you it's cut all the way across. Oh my gosh, I did good. Here, this one's not quite cut. And that's it. So that's really not too bad. So there you have all your credit card slots. I'm gonna move my X-Acto knife somewhere safe before I cut myself. Okay. And again, on this one, I need just to see, I need to mark my lines, yeah, on the back. Let's mark our lines on the back. And then we'll just draw the line. So, I don't 
honestly haven't made the pattern yet, so I don't know if I'm going to need these on the front or the back. So I'm putting them on the back. I can easily transfer them if I need to. But you can see this piece is not even. So let me trim it up. It's really bad. You know, you get uh, to cutting things, and um, okay, so there's that piece, um, which goes with this piece, I believe. Let me just make sure. Yeah, these two pieces go together. Okay, all right. Let me do some more prep, and we'll be right back. All right, so I, I think I am going to do something similar to what um, Nicole does on most of her patterns. I'm going to cut my corners off on this piece. And I just centered it, and I measured two and a half inches over on each side. And then, let me just make sure, two and a half inches on each side. And that leaves me... Well, it doesn't matter what it leaves me. And then I, I measured down one and a half inches and I just connected those. And then I am going to um, use my rotary cutter and cut those. You can do whatever you want. You could leave it straight or you could round it if it if that suited your fancy but i actually like that and then we'll obviously do some edge coating my mail hasn't come yet so i haven't seen uh, the mojo sews so what she did in the pattern was she cut this pattern piece in two pieces she measured down to this topped boxed edge and added a quarter inch for a seam allowance and then added a quarter inch on this piece for a seam allowance and that's what that is. So I have my seam allowances there and there. <clears throat> and then I think she's putting these right sides together. And just sewing at a quarter inch. Oh, I gotta go change my thread. Darn it. I kind of gotten a little ahead of myself. And I didn't change my thread. So let me go do that. All right. So let's sew that at the quarter inch seam allowance. And I didn't do it straight. You guys, I don't know what's going on with me lately, but I can't sew a straight stitch. Do you ever have that happen to you? I mean, it's the most ridiculous thing. Before we went to Kansas City, I was, I was sewing something and I couldn't get a straight stitch for, as the old saying is, love no money. And now I can't either. Don't don't feel bad if you have to un if you have to pick something. 
and redo it. Just don't feel bad. Because I see people just getting really disheartened and uh, discouraged. You know what? Everybody makes mistakes. I'm telling you, everybody. And I, I've said this in many a video. I'm putting some eighth inch double-sided tape on here to hold these down while I top stitch. Just That's what I'm doing while I'm talking. Um, I, I would say 99% of mistakes that we make when we sew are fixable. Some aren't. And sometimes you may have to cut a new piece because the what happened was just unfixable. Not very often does that happen. I'm telling you. Um, and if it does, you know what? It's not the end of the world. Because it's just a sewing project. And if I've had to trash things. Now, I don't usually do that. I can usually fix things so that they're good enough. But, um, you know, I've had to. All right, let's top stitch this. Let me do it from this side. Now, remember, this is a raw edge project. So keep your back stitching to a minimum. All right, so our card slots, I put a little piece of eighth inch double-sided tape below each one. I put one at the very top and I put one at the bottom. I'm doing them very much like um, she's done before. But for this, I'm gonna take the piece of paper off the bottom. All right, so if you put a piece of double-sided tape under the first card slot, and then fix that there, then turn it over, and we're gonna sew right, whoops, I gotta get my thread out of here, right below the card slot. Just right below the card slot. And I am not pulling my thread to the back. I'm gonna back stitch just a couple times. Not even a couple times, really. Once, we'll do it. And I'm using landscape fabric. I am not using the fabric that came with the box. So that's what you have. Then, the pattern comes with a template, which I like. And we're gonna lay that right up underneath the next card slot and I'm just gonna fold that so I, it'll have a little memory there then we're gonna take that next piece of tape off and fold that up turn it over and so under the second card slot So you've created one card slot. Here's what I'm gonna suggest that you do, and I'd say this with every card slot I make. Grab a credit card and test your slot. It's a perfect fit, okay? Then we're gonna do the same thing with my tape. And we're gonna lay the, we're gonna bring this down. Gonna take that piece of tape off the third card slot. I probably should have waited. Put 
because that'll stick to my card slot. Okay, I'm just gonna test that before I sew it. Yeah, perfect. Okay, so we're up underneath the third card slot. And we're going, I gotta get this stuff out of this way. It's thundering here and lightning and now we're gonna sew underneath the third card slot. I asked my husband, I said, uh, next time you go to Home Depot, can you look for some more of this uh, thin landscaping fabric? And he looked at me like I had 10 heads. <laughs> he said, you have a whole roll in there. I'm like, I'm not. All right, same thing. Lay our piece of paper template up and fold it up. And take it out. Remove the tape on the fourth card slot. Turn it over and top stitch. Now, if you're using a highly contrasting thread, I probably would take the time to pull the threads to the back, but I'm not. Mine blends really well. Beautiful, okay. All right, next. Right underneath that next one. Fold that up. Get my tape off of there. And as you're going, just make sure you're keeping things fairly straight. I mean, it's not the end of the world because you're not going to see this in the back, but you don't want things to be askew. At least I don't. This is a time consuming process. Card slots typically are. I mean, it's got good payoff, but they take a while. Okay. A couple more here. <clears throat> My uh, landscaping is fabric is too long, but that's okay. I'd rather have it too long than not have enough. Okay. And you just keep doing that the whole way up. I don't know if you can hear the thunder. It's great. We need the rain, actually. So I'm not complaining, okay? Again, this is, we're getting there. I think it's, uh, I don't know if most of you guys probably have done some of Nicole's patterns and Lynn's handmade. They're very similar in how they do the card slots. All right, here's the last one underneath there. Okay. And now we just need to create this last one. So I have a piece of double-sided tape at the top here. 
Let me just check something. Yeah. So I am going to do the same thing. Oh man, I barely have enough. Look at that. It's because there's more card slots than I typically do. That's okay. I like it. Okay, so what I did was, on this last one, I just, there's about a half inch here. Let me measure it for you. Yeah, a, a little less than a half inch fold all the way there. And now I am gonna just trim this up so it's not showing. Cause this, remember a raw edge and just trim it, it's, you'll see how much I'm trimming. Very little, actually. There you go. That's all it needs. Okay. So there's your card slots. Now, I would suggest before you move on, just to test them to make sure that you didn't close one off by mistake because it happens. Ask me how I know. I know. Okay. Excellent. Now I'm considering, I gotta figure out where I'm gonna put my logo. So let me do that, hold on a second. All right. So I have my card slots. And I did put my um, logo, and I just put it in the middle of the back there. And I did cover it with some Decaville because, you know, that's what I always do. All right. So here is my, what's this called? My interior top. I have it in two pieces. This is the interior bottom part of the interior top. I know it's very confusing. Um, this is where my snaps are going to go up here. I only marked them on the front. I didn't mark them on the back. But how she does it, she's doing it, is she is putting them wrong sides together. Yeah. I don't know. Well, I'm, I'm doing it this way because uh, I like the color combination, would I do it this way again? I don't know, I don't know. Let me get my uh, clips here. Okay, so this is what you have. This ends up being the top, this is the bottom of that interior flap okay and now we are just going to sew these together and uh, let me read through the pattern just one second yeah this is an eighth of an inch seam allowance Let's see how we did. And just like Nicole always does, you know, don't do as straight as you can. But if you need to trim these, you certainly can. Like, see that? I probably will do just a hair of trimming there. All right, so now we have one piece. All right, hold on. All right, so uh, it's pouring out rain and thundering and lightning. I'm not going outside to get the mail. So I'm just gonna use some of my um, Giardini base coat. I'm sure it's fine to mix and match, but I'm just gonna paint this raw edge. And it's gonna, whatever um, you use, it's gonna soak it up this first go around. So don't don't worry about that. That's very very typical. 
we're going to put several layers of base coat on. So now I'm just going to go make sure, clean it up. Okay. I am going to go ahead and actually just put one more on and let it soak that up. Normally you would probably let this dry for 10 minutes and I will after this one. I'm not the best edge coater. Uh, I'm kind of a messy painter in general. I'll just be quite honest. Okay, and just make sure there's not, I see there's some glumping there. Just get that off. Okay. Now I'm gonna go lay this and let it dry. Okay. my little important towel. All right, let me grab the next step. All right, while well, I'm letting that dry, I'm gonna do these other two pieces. So here's my back connector. I have a piece of tape down the middle. She has you measure in a certain amount on each side. And then I have a little piece of tape here And this is where we're going to put our uh, little D-rings. These half-inch D-rings are so small. Oh, I don't really like them. And we're going to take that little tiny piece at the end there and just fold that over as neat as we can. And we're going to do that on both ends. And then there were more... Now, is it anybody else fumble fingers with these small this small hardware? Oh, I like it, but goodness gracious. Alright, let's fold that down. Okay. Now on the back of your piece, oh I also cut how I did it, I also cut my top here to match my other top. So these both these pieces match. And then these two lines is where we're going to center this on the back. And so I'm going to just barely transfer those lines to the front because I can't see them. Not good, Barb. And we want to center those. this handle between those two lines, okay? Doesn't have to be perfect, but you know me. That's as good as it's gonna get. All right, the other thing, and we'll sew down and around and make a little oblong square there. Get those pieces. And then I did my strap. This is a two inch. I put a piece of tape down the center and now I'm just gonna fold that in half. And because it's a strap, you know what I'm gonna do? And this is not, I'm gonna do my method of sewing it together and then turning it. So I'm gonna have to go grab a half inch um, swivel clasp. So let me go do that. Oh, this is fraying really bad. Okay, hold on. All right, so I put my swivel clasp on. But now I'm gonna undo the tape on both sides here. I'm gonna have to probably work on the fraying a little. And I'm gonna sew these two ends 
right sides together. This is such a better way to do it, I, I, even though it's kind of a sticky mess right now and fraying everywhere. It'll be better in the long run. Okay, I'm just going to use a really small stitch length here. I mean a seam allowance, a quarter inch. Sided tape back together and fold those back together. All right, now we'll sew on either side of that. I'm just trying to turn my there we go. Okay, so I'm going to start here pretty close to the uh, seam. And you'll probably have to go slow over this hump. Just keep that in mind. Just move your swivel clasp out of the way as you go. It feels like it's in the way, but it's not. It's good. And now I will do the other side. method is a little extra work, but I'm telling you, in the long run, it looks so much better. I'm getting next to my hump here, my seam. class now there are no raw edges there there is that seam 
right there, but that's it. It just looks so much more professional. Look at that, plenty big, plenty, plenty big. So now I am gonna just put uh, one, maybe two rows of stitches right there close to the swivel class so it doesn't go flying around everywhere. I will do two rows of stitches. Mm. I'm going uh, to see my Bernina take my machine in for uh, um, automatic thread cutters acting out. So I'm going to have him sharpen my scissors while I'm there. He, he's pretty good about that, actually. Because these are just a tiny bit dull. I probably cut something I shouldn't have. Just a tiny bit. I mean, and it's annoying a tiny bit. That's the problem. There you go. See how, how, see how professional that looks though? No raw edges, no big, huge quarter seam there. I just, I really like it. All right, so now let's sew. I got stuff everywhere here, guys. I'm gonna have to clean that up. Let's start over here and let's sew a nice oblong box. around our connector. Go as far as you can. And I'm gonna back up, because I'm pretty close to my D-ring. I'll turn it around. That way, I don't have to worry about uh, it acting out next to my hardware. It's really just not worth it for me. I'll do the exact same thing down here at this end. It's a beautiful thing, you guys. Oh my. Okay, let's just burn those ever so slightly. Okay. So there's your connector there. All right, I'm gonna put one more coat of base coat here. And then I think we can set this piece aside for a minute. You'll notice that this, this coat kind of beads at the top, which is what it should do after a couple coats. And that's what you really want. Oops. No, 
nice big glob there, Barb. Just get it while it's wet. Let's see how, oh dear, yeah. Hmm. I'm going to set that aside to dry. I'm terrible. My husband won't let me paint the house because I'm such a sloppy painter. I'm really not. I just... I'm not patient enough to do it. That's probably more than anything the case. That's why I'm not a quilter because it takes way too long to do things. All right, let me get the next step ready. Okay, I'm putting uh, my magnetic snaps on this side. And I moved them over because I thought they were too close to my corners. You'll have to decide where yours are. I thought they were uh, way too close, so just a second. Yeah. So I just put my little, uh, I, I'm using two, the uh, B bag, bag, B box, only had one. I'm using two. I think wallops are just better with two. Okay, so I'm gonna get the pattern so you can see what I'm doing. So this is the interior top. And here's my, magnetic snap spots so I move them in about a half an inch so you can see that I moved them in about a half an inch I didn't like where they were so just make sure that when you put them in that you have room to do top stitching there will be top stitching. Okay. I gotta put this away immediately or I, I uh, cut myself. Okay, so these I'm gonna be, honestly it doesn't matter if you use the male or the female. You know, some people think it does. I don't. In some cases, it does make a difference, but. Um, okay. I am going to use a little piece of Decaville Heavy behind both of them. very big piece and um, I know this feels like it's taken me a long time but I'm very careful with these X-Acto knives. The last thing I need is to cut myself. Okay, so I'm gonna put this on. On both sides. Oh, goodness. 
and then I'll put my little washers on. I will, on my prongs, fold those in. So, it, the, I don't want it, those prongs to get in my way when I'm top stitching. Okay. And then I will also cover those with a piece of Decaville white. I know, it's a lot of little steps, isn't it? It's worth it. You may not think so, and you have to make that decision for yourself. I think it's worth it. Bag making is can be very time consuming. All right, just a second. All right, so we are ready to do the other set of card slots. So again, I put double-sided tape underneath each card slot. Um, and then I cut out my ID window and I put tape all the way around. And now I'm just going to put my piece of clear vinyl. And I try and clean it before I put it on there. There's something on there. Let's see. We can get it before we put it. a backing on there. Hold on. There we go. And we're just gonna put that right below that card slot and all the way around, okay? So just like that. And then we're gonna go and stitch all the way around the box and then underneath that first card slot because that first card slot is for the ID window. really a kind of a faux stitching just to make it look like all the other card slots you don't have to do that row of stitching if you don't want to okay and then find your card ID window backing which for me is the B fabric and we're gonna put some more double-sided tape on all four sides. This double-sided tape is falling apart. I'm not sure why, but it is. And we are gonna go above that last card slot. I mean, the first card slot. I know, it feels weird. Because if we don't, then this is going to be um, blocking that card slot. Okay, so let's take all that tape off. And this is right side down. So that's what she should have. Oh, look at my little cute bee. Mm -hmm. Okay. Alright, and then we're ready to do our credit card slots, which I will do on fast forward.
All right, so there's my credit card slots. And we're gonna do the same thing we did with the last piece, wrong sides together. And we're gonna create a one inch, one eighth inch seam allowance. <coughs> Excuse me. And then we're gonna top stitch and um, edge coat. Just make sure these are pretty even. We can even them up just a hair, but you want them to be even to begin with, really. I did trim my other piece. I mean, it was minuscule, but it was enough that I thought it needed it. So I'll show you if I need to do it on this one. I think I do, actually. Yeah, well... Yeah, do you see that right there? I'm gonna trim that just a little tiny bit. So I grab my mat and my little ruler and we're just going to barely cut that off. And that's all there is. It was just this tiny little piece really makes a difference. All right, now, let's get our top, or base coat out. And our little, our little towel. And we're gonna put our first coat of base coat on this. All right, I cut my zipper at about eight inches. And then measure where your seven and a half inches is. And we're gonna lay that right where that seven and a half inches is. I know it feels weird. We'll see. On this inside piece, so right where it is, and we're gonna stitch. I don't like this method because your opening is very tiny, but that's all right. I'm doing it that way. We're stitching only on the inside piece, not the outside. And then we'll trim those off. Don't forget to put your zipper pull on. I already have my zipper pull on. Okay, and then do it on this side. And then, I don't know if I said this, but we'll cut off our excess zipper behind here. It's a pretty small zipper. Just make sure you're not cutting your tab. Same on this side. Okay. All right, so that's what you should have. If you have any cleanup to do, now's probably the time. I would be careful with this vinyl. It doesn't like the flame at all. It scorches it, so just be very careful. Don't leave it on there. 
any length of time. All right, so that's what you should have. Your zipper. All right, so now let's grab our piece. Let me get rid of some of this paper, just one second. All right, well, this second coat, uh, this is actually, I have three coats on this, and it's still drying just slightly. It's pretty dry, actually. So we're gonna take this, and here's our zipper that we just created. We're gonna, I put a piece of eighth inch double-sided tape. And this is the piece that we're working with, okay? And we're gonna lay that. Ugh. I'm getting really sticky right on top of that zipper. I'm very sticky to it, so. And just make sure it's pretty even. So mine is not even, and that's okay. We can fix it. Okay, now, now we're gonna turn that over and we're gonna put another piece of double-sided tape across this bottom edge. And grab one of our lining pieces called the zipper pocket lining. And this happens to be my B fabric for me. We're gonna take that tape off, the paper off the tape. And we're gonna lay this right on the bottom with the wrong side up. Okay, I know it feels weird. Okay, so just like that, my tape is completely falling apart. Okay, um, I gotta check my bobbin. Hold okay. on, my bobbin's good. All right, so we just put that on there and it looks weird right now, but we're gonna top stitch an eighth of an inch. So now, so that's what you have. Now we're gonna fold that down and just press it with our finger. And, um, where's my little, I'm gonna use this. I'm just gonna use this to press it pretty hard. This is waterproof canvas and it, it finger presses really nice. So you can see that's perfect. All right, now we're gonna take this and lay it like this. And we're gonna put another piece of double-sided tape on this edge. <sighs> I hate throwing that away because there's still plenty of tape on it. And now we're gonna take this piece and we're gonna lay it right here. If I can keep my zipper pull out of the way. Okay. And then we're gonna top stitch that at an eighth of an inch. I'm gonna go get some water. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, I, you want to make sure, I was just looking at my instructions, you want to make sure this stays out of the way, your pocket. And then we're going to add our other pocket here. I forgot. really kind of the same way with that pocket going up. I know, that's weird. Then you're gonna top stitch. Just like that. Now we're gonna turn it over and top stitch on that side. All right, so while my edge paint is drying, my last base coat, I am putting my um, last two magnetic snaps on this piece on the bottom here. All right, so we're gonna do uh, the top coat, not the top coat, the color coat. I keep saying it's the top coat. And just, you're gonna have to go really slow because this is very much a color. You don't wanna get it anywhere where it shouldn't be. Like that.
All right, so that side of my um, color coat, I put two coats of that on. Now I'm just putting my clear coat on. And really that just protects the color. I usually try and put it on. I'm only going to do one top coat, clear coat. So I'm uh, doing it pretty thick. Okay. All right, word to the wise. These little guys, these samples that um, comes with the box, the Mojo sews of paint, very full. Go very slow when you open it. When I opened that color coat, it got everywhere. Let me just show you. It got everywhere. Including it's on my t-shirt, which this is the, like the oldest t-shirt I own, so I'm okay with that. But just keep that in mind. It, it's very full. The clear and the, the base coat aren't as big of a deal, but the um, color coat, you just gotta be extremely careful. And I try and clean my little roller here. Right away. I think most of my paints are Giordani, Giordani, Giordani paints, and I get them from the Buckle Guy. Um, so we're gonna let that dry. All right, I think my um, top coat is dry. I walked away and did some household things. Very pretty, I like it. Okay, so then on your other piece, put your uh, <clears throat> your Peltex on. So there's one, two, three pieces. This one I had to cut because I changed how my fold was. And then there's one strip here and two strips here. I put them on initially with a piece of uh, double-sided tape and then I did put some glue on them. So, that's all that is. And what it should end up doing is folding like that. Oh my gosh, look at that, you guys. That might have to be my new favorite wallet. Okay. 
This can be very confusing, but this is what you're gonna end up with. So you've got your snaps here, your D-ring connector here, you've got a, uh, this is actually a slip pocket here, your credit card slots, your zipper pocket, more credit card slots, your ID window, and this ends up being another slip pocket here. The fold lines on the pattern are critical here. So make sure that when you're folding, you're folding on these lines. So you, you can barely see my lines in there. There's a line right there. And so that is very important. And so <clears throat> you, can, you should have these are folded together, this and this, and this and this. You should have about mm, maybe five eighths of an inch here or so. But now we're gonna put these wrong sides together. And they should line up pretty good. Pull them together. And I'm gonna do my bottom and then I'll do my top. Or you can do the top and then the bottom, whatever you prefer. But, um, yeah. Now there may be some trimming that has to occur and that's perfectly okay. The one thing you want to make sure of is that where your stabilizer is, you'll see that here in a second, that it's folding where you want it to. I'll show you here in a second. Okay, so here's our wallet. It's going to fold like this. Just like that. I know it's a hot mess right now, but that actually looks very good. Very good. All right, so now we're gonna sew this in sections, two sections. And I'm gonna put actually a lot of clips on here so that it stays where I want it to. And like I said, I will probably, I know for me, I'll probably end up having to do some trimming. You know, it's the first time I've made this. And whenever you make anything for the first time, there's always things that you'll do different next time. So I'll, I'll go over that actually with you guys, what I would do different next time. Okay. Hmm. Okay. So there's the back. Actually, it looks pretty good. Let me clip this together. You don't want to, you, we're not sewing our zipper pocket. That needs to be Lucy. Okay, so just keep that in mind. All right, so we are gonna sew this first. Here, here, and here. Okay. Let me get rid of some of this stuff. <clears throat> so. 
So I think I'm going to start down here. And I'm doing just a little more than an eight, so I have a room to um, trim. This way. See how we did. I think I'm gonna make another one of these, but I'm gonna do it in cork. Yeah, I got some serious trimming to do, but that's okay. Okay. All right. Now the next is the top part. Let me trim some of that up just for my own comfort level. All right. So now I'm gonna sew this top part down. And I'm gonna start over here. And you can kind of feel where your stabilizer is. You don't really wanna sew on your stabilizer if you can help it. All right, here's our wallet. Um, you know, it'll be better the second time I do it, I'm sure, because I learned quite a bit. But there it is, it's really pretty good. So there it is on the side, there it is on the back. You open it up and you have your bracelet connector here. I'll put it on. And then you have uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven card slots. You have a slip pocket. You have your zipper pocket. You have one, two, three, four, five more credit cards. So a total of 12 and an ID window and another slip pocket. It really, I, I'm, I'm very pleased with it. Uh, I gotta do the top coating or the edge coating, um, but there it is. The wristlet is optional. I still would probably put, even if I wasn't gonna have an, a wristlet, I would put that on just because it's a decorative piece, but you don't have to. 
Um, yeah, it's uh, it's one of those patterns that you need to do more than once. So I will go ahead and do all my top coating or edge coating, and then I'll come back and I'll show you the end result. All right, guys, here it is. Here's what we made, the Triscale Wallet. I will say it turned out really good. Now, edge, edge painting is just a tedious process. What would I do different? I like the two-tone but I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make it out of cork rather than vinyl, and I'm gonna do one for the inside, one piece for the inside, and then I might use a separate piece for one of the other insides. One outside, one full, same fabric on the outside, and then for the most part, I think I'll do the same fabric on the inside. Um, would I do anything else different? Mm, not really. I like it. There it is. Thanks for watching, guys. Go get one. And go get this pattern and make it. I think the bee bag, if you like these fabrics and materials, the uh, bee bag making subscription box, I believe, is available. I'm not sure. Um but you could certainly use your own materials. Thanks for watching. Be sure to click like, subscribe, and comment.